Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to creating a survival horror game from scratch. In the last video, we started off the project and we created a basic hunger system. And in today's video, we're going to be continuing that and taking it one step further. So if you haven't watched the last video, I advise that you go ahead and do so using the thumbnail in the top left hand corner. In addition to that, I also advise that you go ahead and check out the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series just so you can understand the engine a little bit easier and hopefully you're able to follow along uh, as well. So just a quick recap. So in the last video, what we did was we created the project and we actually started creating our hunger system. So we've gave the player a base hunger of 100 and once it gets down to zero, the player is going to die and you know, we didn't do too much else. So what I want to do in today's video is essentially do a little bit more to the death stuff and I all just so the player can't move when he dies and I also want to set up a little health pickup, well not a health pickup, but a little food pickup uh, for the player. So if I go ahead and open up Photoshop real quick. What I'm going to be doing is creating a little crate inside of the game that I can, pr the player can actually walk over to increase their hunger level. So instead of it being low, they can pick it up and it goes, you know, a little bit higher and gives them a little bit more time to find more uh, food or complete more objectives and stuff like that. So one thing I do want to know is if you don't actually have Photoshop, I advise that you just click the link in the description for these files that I've made in Photoshop. You can design your own stuff, um, but for now I'm just going to use these simple little uh, images that I've got here. I've essentially just taken a crate texture from Google Images, um, and then I've also put some little turkeys on there, a leg for like a little minor pickup, and you know a whole turkey for something that's going to give you a little bit more you know, it's going to fill you up a bit more and it's going to give you more hunger level. Anyway, so first things first, uh, there is one thing that I want to do is I'm going to open up my third person player and when you actually die over here, so you can see event tick, so we basically check every frame to see whether or not the player is alive or has, you know, more than 100, uh, sorry, more than zero hunger. Uh, it just prints a string at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that off and just set the game to paused. The reason for that is to pretty much just stop the player input and you know if we wanted to we can then go on and open up our end game screen but for now I'm just going to go ahead and chuck that in there so you know the player can't do anything once he runs out of food. So if I go ahead and press play and we test that now you're going to see as the hunger level goes down um, you know he should die when it gets down to zero. So just give it a second and hopefully it should work. I should probably also reduce the value for testing, but for now, it should be all good. So 25, and when it gets down to zero any second now, you can see it pauses the game, it says you died, and from there we could put on all of our UI stuff, and you know, uh, it's up to you really. Anyway, so now that's done, let's go ahead and create the pickup. Now, what I'm actually going to be doing is showing you the whole process of how I actually get this image from Photoshop and get it into the engine. So, the first things first. Um, if you haven't actually watched my Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series, you'll know there's a few different types of textures that you're going to use for your materials. You're going to have things like your normal map, your diffuse map, uh, your emissive, and so on. What I'm going to be using for this material, because it's so simple, I'm just going to be using a diffuse material for the color. And then I'm just going to use an emissive to essentially make the little turkey bit glow a little bit, just so the player can actually see it in the dark. Being a survival horror game, the uh, environment is actually going to be quite dark. So anyway, so inside of Photoshop, I've got it looking pretty nice. Um, it should work quite well for a box. So. This is going to be my diffuse, it is my color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this out. You can put this anywhere you want, um, but I advise that you just go ahead and chuck it anywhere. And because I'm going to have two pickup types, one, uh, you know, one that's going to be quite filling and one that's not quite so filling. So you can pretty much tell because you've got a little turkey leg and then you've got the whole turkey on the other one. So I'm going to have two textures, one for the whole turkey and one for just the turkey leg. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this out and to get it into the engine I need to save it as a PNG or a target. I'm just going to work with uh, PNG for now as that works best. Also it's best practice when importing textures into the engine to use uh, textures 
uh, where the resolution is set to the power of 2. So usually you're going to work with 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024, or 248 by 248, and so on. This is only a little crate, so I'm only going to use 512 by 512 because I don't want too much of a hit on performance. It doesn't need to be too detailed, and you're not really going to see it close up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pretty much save out the, um, the diffuse for this, so for the color. So what I'm going to do is type in full, pickup, and then because I like to use naming conventions, I'm just going to do full pickup underscore diffuse. And then when we create the emissive, we're also going to have full pickup underscore emissive. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the minor pickup. So I'm going to go to PNG once again, same place, and I'm just going to call it minor pickup underscore diffuse. I'm just going to replace that one there for now. And as for the emissive, what you want to do with emissive is you want to get rid of anything that you don't want to be lit up and you're just going to replace that with black. It's quite simple with this because I only want the uh, turkey to be lit up. I'm pretty much just going to have the turkey leg on a black environment, uh, a black background. So now I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and save it out. And as same thing, PNG. And because this is this is my minor pickup, I'm gonna type I'm gonna set it to minor pickup underscore emissive. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the for the big one as well. And there we are. And I'm gonna call this uh, full pickup underscore emissive. Now, if you haven't if you don't get time to design your own stuff or if you don't have Photoshop yourself, you can go ahead and just download all of this in the description. I'm going to leave a link with the Photoshop document and all of the files saved out individually as emissive and diffuse maps. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to firstly import all of my assets. So, I'm going to create a new folder. So, go into my content browser, new folder, and I'm going to call this, um, okay, I'm just going to call it textures for now. And I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to go and import the stuff from my desktop. I can either drag it in, just like this, or I could just go ahead and press the import button down here. But for now, I'm just going to drag it in, and it should import just fine. And there we are. And now, what I'm going to do is create the materials for it. So first things first, I'm going to create a material for the minor and the full. I'm just going to right click this and create material and it will chuck in the diffuse for you already. And I'm going to do the same on both sides. So create material, that is done. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And for the emissive, I'm just going to go ahead and chuck that in there too. So emissive, and I'm going to hook that straight up into the emissive color and hopefully that should give it a little bit of glow. And if we zoom out, it should be glowing a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side now. So I'm just gonna make sure it's saved and you apply all the changes. And let's do the same for the other side. Emissive color, and drag it in. Okay, so that's everything for the material side of things. Let's get into the actual functionality. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And I'm going to go over to my third person blueprints folder and I'm going to create a new blueprint and these blueprints are going to be basically for the little pickup for the food. So let's create a new blueprint class. We're just going to make this a normal actor and I'm going to call this minor, sorry, minor uh, hunger pickup. And inside of this, what we're going to do is quite simple. So first things first. I'm going to add a box. So let's just try and find that from the components panel up here. So if we sc scroll down, let's add a cube in. And under our material, I'm just going to set that to, which one is this? Minor. Uh, minor pickup underscore diffuse underscore mat. And there we are, we've got our crate. And you can see it's got a little bit of glow around the uh, turkey leg, which is quite nice. And if we go over to the event graph now, we need to set up the stuff for begin overlap. So what we're going to do here is event actor begin overlap. What I'm going to do is cast to the third person character and under the object wildcard, I'm going to hook this up. Now, the reason that I've done this is because it's essentially going to allow us to 
uh, create an event and fire off a uh, script whenever, you know, the player or the third person character blueprint actually touches this blueprint. So when they collide, we're going to essentially just add to the value for hunger. Uh, just to keep it up, just to turn it up and it will give him more time. Now if you think about it logically, you'll understand exactly what's going on here. So what we can do with cast a third person character is it's going to allow us to reference some of its variables and some of its functions. So what I'm going to do here is actually, as the third person character, I'm going to set the hunger, set player hunger, and we're just going to increase this. So for the minor pickup, what I'm going to do is do integer plus integer, and under plus one, we're not going to do plus one, it's going to need a bit more than that. I'm going to get the normal value, so get player hunger, and we're just going to pretty much add, you know, a value to itself. So for me, I'm just going to add 25, just like that. And once that's done, we're going to run a little check. Because we don't want it to go above 100, we just need to run a check to see whether or not it's actually above 100 now. So I'm going to add the branch, and under condition, we're just going to check whether or not the uh, integer is actually greater than another value. So returns true if a is less than b, no, it's greater than we need. So hook up the return value for player hunger. So that's the result of the addition, and we just need to check whether or not it's greater than 100. If it is, we're going to get a reference to player hunger, and then we're just going to set it down to 100 so it's not above it. So if it is true, we're going to set player hunger and we're just going to set this to 100. So hold up. Set player hunger. Hook this up to true. And it's going to be 100. There we are. And hopefully now that should work just great for us. And it's going to set it to 100 and it's not going to go above it. So what I'm going to do here quickly is I'm going to add in print string and get it to show that it only goes to 100 now. So I'm going to compile, close that up, and I'm going to put a couple of these in the scene so we can actually test whether or not it's working. So I'm going to chuck in one, two, three, couple more. We're going to play around with the size soon uh, to make sure it looks a little, a little bit better. But I'm going to press play, walk into it. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't seem to be doing the addition. So we need to figure out why that's happening in a second. So let's go ahead and open up our pickup. And I think what's happening here is we need to change this to a collision box. So go ahead and delete it, add a component, and type in box collision. So add that in, drag this in, and get a, uh, an event for begin overlap. Delete this and hook it up just like that. And under the object, we're going to hook it up to other actor. Compile it, make sure it all works. That's all great, go to the viewport. Make sure the box collision is big enough. So I'm just gonna quickly scale this up. I'm gonna do it on one axis first, just like that, that, and bang. And let's give that a go. So if I press compile, play once, twice, three times, you can see it's setting it down to 100. And as time goes on, it still reduces it down from 75. Should go to 50 in a second. Just give it a moment. There we go, and it's going down again. So if we was to touch one of these, it's going to set it back up to 100 or 75. There you are, and it's all working. It looks a little bit dodgy at the moment, so let's quickly fix that. Um, basically, it's only showing us a value um, when it goes to above 100. So what I'm going to do is quickly print a string here on the false value as well. So print string false, and I'm going to hook this up to... Uh, let's just get a reference to this, just like that. Compile it, and let's see how it works now. So press play, hit it, it's 100, 100, still 100, and it's not going above 100, and it's working perfectly fine for us. So that's pretty much everything for the food pickup. If you want to create the, uh, the more filling one as well, all I'm going to do is pretty much duplicate this, and I'm going to rename it, and it's going to be full hunger pickup. 
And with this one, we're just going to change the material so the player knows that it's going to give us more uh, food or more hunger. You know, so I'm going to change this to full pick up on uh, diffuse. There we are. And in the event graph, we just need to change this value so it gives you more hunger level. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to 50 instead of 25. So we get a little bit more of a boost. And now if you wanted to, you could do a whole bunch of other stuff to these little pickups. For example, if you wanted to, you could add a little rotating movement. So rotating movement, or you could change the materials. You could do a whole bunch of other fancy stuff. Um, but for now, it should look pretty cool. So if I go ahead and press play, you can see we've got a my level and it works just great for us. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you've learned plenty more. Um, so you can see we're getting quite cool stuff with our hunger system. In the next video, hopefully I should be showing you how to get it onto the UI. So we're going to be creating a little progress bar for our HUD inside of Photoshop, bringing it into the game and it should feel like a more coherent product. Anyway, thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and make sure you check out the next video. Goodbye.